evening, everybody. I'm Christine Buckley, Executive Director at the Brain Aneurysm Foundation, and I want to welcome you to our 14th Annual Research Symposium, albeit virtual. Um, this is always one of my favorite nights of the year because it brings so many people together for brain aneurysms. It brings together the patients, their families and friends, medical professionals, industry, and researchers. It's really a full team effort by all involved to raise awareness of this disease that affects one in 50 people and to raise the funds that is necessary for brain aneurysm research. I miss seeing so many of you, but we have a great program ahead. And before we get started, I would like to take a moment of silence for the lives lost due to a brain aneurysm. It's my pleasure to now introduce Dr. Robert Brown of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Dr. Brown has been involved with the foundation since its inception. He's the vice president of our medical advisory board, and he's gonna say a few words of welcome. Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Brown, and I'm a neurologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I also have the opportunity to serve as the vice president of the medical advisory board of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. And I'd like to welcome you to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation Research Symposium. A brain aneurysm is a relatively common entity. About 2% of the population have a brain aneurysm. And the most devastating complication of brain aneurysm that we worry about is something called a subarachnoid hemorrhage, a type of stroke, which even in the year 2020, with all of the advancements that we have in medicine, still can lead to significant morbidity as well as mortality. Now research continues to move forward to try to impact on the field of brain aneurysm. And then to that end, we'll have the opportunity this evening to hear about some of the research proposals funded by the Brain Aneurysm Foundation, which are continuing to advance our knowledge in the field. Brain Aneurysm Foundation research started at a relatively small level back in 2007, two projects in the amount of $20,000 and continued to grow over the years. And at its maximum, just a year ago, $500,000 was available to support brain aneurysm research and 14 projects were supported. Now the importance of brain aneurysm foundation research support really cannot be overstated because federal funding for brain aneurysm research continues to be woefully inadequate. So we continue to afford to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation supporting the science and the advancement of the field of brain aneurysm. I can say as a reviewer of the research proposals that are submitted, the research is superb. And tonight we're gonna to have the opportunity to hear from some of the recipients and they'll share with us how they are advancing the field. I'd like to again welcome you and look forward to spending this time with you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for your steadfast support of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation's mission for so many years. We appreciate it. The Brain Aneurysm Foundation takes very seriously our role in providing research funding, which includes the follow-up with our prior year recipients. So our next portion of our program is to give me here a few words of updates from the 2019 recipients and what they've encountered by working on their projects. Many of them had challenges due to COVID-19, and because of that, they will be allowed to apply for a one-year no-cost extension. Hi, I'm Darcy Liddington, and I work at the University of Toronto in close association with Dr. Stephen Sebastian Bowles. Our project has some fantastic results that clearly show that brain artery function changes over the course of the day, and that this has a significant effect on the amount of injury that occurs after an aneurysm ruptures. A better understanding of why this is the case will help us develop better medical interventions to both save and improve lives of those who suffer an aneurysmal rupture. To date, we have mostly used genetic models and we can successfully manipulate the amount of injury that we observe. We were just about to start testing medications when the COVID crisis hit. This has delayed our project a little bit. However, we're back to full speed again and pressing forward with this important research. This research program would not have been possible without funding from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. 
we would like to express our sincere gratitude to Tom Tinlin and the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for supporting our research program with the Thomas J. Tinlin Chair of Research. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Lewis Kim, Professor at the University of Washington and Chief of the Neurological Surgery Service at Harborview Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. Our BAF-funded study is titled Preventative Treatment of Post-Stroke Depression in Aneurysmal Subarachnoid Hemorrhage. Aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage is the life-threatening type of brain bleeding from a ruptured aneurysm. After recovery, these patients are 2.6 times more likely to develop symptoms of depression or anxiety that were not present before hospitalization. With the BAS funding, our study is able to provide preliminary data on the feasibility and benefits of antidepressant medications in patients recovering from ruptured brain aneurysms. As with any study at the outset, there were some obstacles to overcome, not the least of which was the current pandemic. I'm very proud of our study team. We've overcome these challenges and have doubled our recruitment rate since May. This research has many moving parts and requires a strong study team with the knowledge and empathy to serve the patient population. BAF funding has allowed us to support the study team and supply them with the time and resources to carry out this innovative research. Without the support of the Brain Anderson Foundation, this research would not be possible. Specifically, I would like to thank the Nebraska's Hope for a Better Tomorrow Chair of Research, the Sharon Epperson Chair of Research, and the Christopher C. Getch Chair of Research sponsored by the Joint Cerebrovascular Section of the AANS and the CNS. From myself and the whole study team at the University of Washington, we would like to thank the funders for their generous support, which directly impacts the way clinicians and care for the mental health of these patients. Hi, my name is Teresa Lansdell, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Michigan State University. I've previously found that some people with IA produce more of an enzyme called HDAC9 than people that don't have IA. And this is important because HDAC9 can decrease estrogen signaling. And women with low estrogen are at increased risk for IA. In my Brain Aneurysm Foundation Research Award application, I propose that increased HDAC9 in females can cause decreased estrogen signaling, which promotes phenotypic switching of vascular smooth muscle cells. To test my hypothesis, I worked with special rats that were more likely to form IAs. And I found that these rats had increased HDAC9 and that the basilar artery had evidence of vascular smooth muscle cell pathology. And when we gave these rats a drug that stops HDAC9 activity, the estrogen receptor expression was restored and the cerebral vascular smooth muscle cells were preserved in their contractile and non-proliferative states. Sadly, our research at Michigan State University has been delayed because of the COVID-19 pandemic, with our research labs being closed for nearly four months. We've only now got our research back up and going, and I really look forward to get learning more from these studies. I'd like to take the time to thank the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for their support of my research, and in particular, the Shirley Dudek Demmer and the Timothy P. Susco Chairs of Research. Without their funding, I would have not been able to obtain data that I'll be using for several publications, as well as to obtain federal research funding. Thank you again. I've enjoyed your support. Hello, my name is Devin McBride from UT Health Science Center in Houston, Texas. Our lab uses experimental models to understand and identify new treatment targets after aneurysm rupture and subarachnoid hemorrhage. We use advanced imaging and functional assessment to identify which targets have the best therapeutic potential. Our project has highlighted a protein on platelets which, as a therapeutic target which can prevent microclots and improve functional outcome after subarachnoid hemorrhage. Interestingly, this protein is also more beneficial to females than to males. Receiving funding from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation is a key to my accomplishments as a new professor. Thank you to all the sponsors for your support and for your desire to help aneurysm research. Hello, my name is Nick Katar, and I'm a neurosurgery resident at the University of Louisville in Louisville, Kentucky. My research is about the effect of adaptoquin on patients with ruptured aneurysms. In the preliminary results of our research, we found that adaptoquin has very potent neuroprotective effects in a mouse model of subarachnoid hemorrhage. We were very excited about it. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic shut down all the research labs and we were unable to continue with our progress. As the labs are reopening, we're very excited to continue this research and I look forward to updating you with more results as they come up. 
without the funding from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation, this project would not have been possible at all. I would like to specifically thank my funders, the Northwell Health, North Shore University Hospital, Brain Aneurysm Center Chair of Research, as well as the Kristen's Legacy of Love Chair of Research. Without you, this would not have been possible at all. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Kartik Motwani, and I'm a member of Dr. Brian Ho's Cerebrovascular Research Lab here at the University of Florida. Our lab investigates how treatment of brain aneurysms may be improved by better understanding their underlying mechanisms. We identified an inflammatory target, IL-17, for which immune blockade improves coiled aneurysm healing in our mouse model. For the past year, we have been investigating how this works, specifically analyzing the infiltration and activity of neutrophils, an immune cell type that is involved in early stages of healing. We aim to use this data to improve the neurosurgical treatment of patients with coiled and coil-assisted therapies. The Brain Aneurysm Foundation has enabled our work with their generosity in both financial and moral support. We thank all of the donors who provide hope to our patients and physicians. With special thanks to Fight Like Frank, the Warrior Challenge, and the James T. Wentz Jr. Chairs of Research for their direct contribution and funding of this research. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Adam Khan. I am a neurosurgery resident at the University of Minnesota uh, in my seventh uh, postgraduate year. Uh, my research project uh, involved evaluating the pre prevalence rate of a specific type of bacteria among patients with the two most common types of brain bleeds uh, we see in a neurosurgery service, uh, traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage due to brain aneurysm uh, rupture. Uh, the greatest obstacle during the course of the year and subsequent delay has been the temporary lockdown on clinical research deemed to be uh, non-urgent um, and uh, significant priority given to COVID-related research, as I'm sure a lot of projects have been held up uh, for. Uh, because of the clinical nature of the, the project and um, obtaining samples from human research, unfortunately, uh, this project had to be at, at a brief moratorium. Uh, the other delay has been the diversion of laboratory resources uh, during the summer months during, again, uh, projects related to COVID. Uh, Brain Aneurysm Research Foundation uh, funding, though, has been extremely crucial to secure the methods to perform a lot of the laboratory testing. Uh, once the moratorium is lifted, which we plan for in the fall, we'll be able to uh, process much of our samples that we obtained and uh, be able to continue forward uh, looking at prevalence rates of this bacteria and establish an odds ratio which has never been uh, looked at before uh, in the neurosurgery literature. Um, I'd like to thank the founders, uh, sorry, the funders uh, for helping set up this grant through the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Hiroki Sato, a postdoc at Bell Neurological Institute in Phoenix. Using the fund from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation, I have been studying why aging promotes the bleeding from the brain aneurysm. Specifically, I am interested in the molecule called Sachin 1. I have been studying if drugs that target Sachin 1 can prevent the bleeding from brain aneurysm. The fund from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation was critical for studying this high risk project. Now, with the data, because of the BA fund, we should be able to apply for NIH grant. I would like to thank the Clark family and the Fight Right Frank Foundation for their generous support. Thank you. Hi, my name is Santiago Gomez. I'm a postdoc researcher from the Brain Anderson Institute at Beth Israel Dakinis Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. And last year, we sought to explore whether women should be screened for a brain aneurysm. With the support of the Brain Anderson Foundation, the Fight Like Frankie, and the Boston Marathon Share of Research, we were able to conduct two studies to evaluate this question. We decided to start first by looking into the prevalence of brain aneurysms among women between 30 and 60 years old in a span of two years of all the women that were seen at BIDMC with a magnetic resonance and geography. So in this first study recently published in the Neurosurgery Journal, we were able to look into more than 2,000 medical records of women, and the difference in prevalence was staggering. Women that did not smoke had a prevalence of 1.9%, very similar to the general population, and women that did smoke had a prevalence of 19%. In other words, one in five women that smoke cigarettes are very likely to harbor an unruptured intracranial aneurysm. 
So our next study seek to validate our initial assessment by looking into a larger sample of patients. We recruited more than 500 women from five different academic institutions within the US and Canada. What we found in this multi-center match study was that women indeed had a very significant risk for harboring a brain aneurysm. Whenever they smoke, the risk for having one increases four times. And whenever they smoke and have underlying hypertension, the risk goes up seven times. The findings from both of these studies suggest that we should evaluate the cost of effectiveness of recommending screening to women between 30 and 60 years old that are chronic smokers. Thank you very much for listening and on behalf of the Brain Aneurysm Institute, I'd like to thank the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for supporting this quest. Hi, my name is Koji Hosaka, working in the Department of Neurosurgery at University of Florida. The current project that I've been working on, which is funded by Brain Aneurysm Foundation Research Grant last year, is telomerase activity in aneurysm formation and healing. The update on that, uh, however, due to the closure of the lab because of COVID-19, so our project progress has been delayed. But thank you very much for bringing Aneurysm Foundation and Christine allow us to extend that period. And special thank you for the, uh, all the donors that uh, we are continuing to work on this uh, project. Thank you so much. Hopefully I can meet you everyone in person in the near future. All right. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Dr. Kaneko, a clinician scientist at the University of California, Los Angeles. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Team Cindy, Ms. Schuller, uh, Brain Aneurysm Foundation, Christine, all the staff there. I really appreciate your research support. Our aim is to try and better understand why some aneurysms are unstable, uh, prone to rupture, and some are not. Uh, in particular, we are focusing on abnormal flow between aneurysms and the response of the vessel wall to, to the flow. Uh, we are behind our original plan because of the delayed transfer of the plans uh, due to some issues at our grant office, and also the lab closure due to COVID. But we worked hard and uh, we were able to get some important preliminary results. Uh, I thought enough to apply for our own grant. Actually, we submitted the grant application to NIH last July. Uh, there was our first R1 grant submission. Uh, without your support, uh, uh, it wouldn't have happened. So the funding was so critical for us. We need to keep working on the experiments. Uh, hopefully, it will improve uh, the prediction of rapture. Again, we thank all of you and please keep staying safe. Thank you, bye. Hello everyone, my name is Chris Pazarikovsky and I'm a neurosurgical resident from the University of Toronto. I'm the proud uh, 2019 Brain Aneurysm Foundation Ellie Helton Chair in Research. The project that was funded by the Brain Aneurysm Foundation examines how aneurysms heal after being treated with a special type of stent called the flow diverting stent. Before our project was halted, unfortunately due to the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, we had some exciting results which showed that cells from the blood vessel next to the aneurysm can cross the stent and uh, block the neck of the aneurysm, leading to uh, uh, full treatment. We're pleased to report that our lab is up and running again and we hope to complete these experiments in the coming months. Our group is incredibly grateful to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation and the family of Ellie Helton who made this all possible with their uh, contribution to our research. Uh, we're very excited to uh, show you our results in the coming months and again thank you so much. Thank you so much for those great updates and continued success with your projects. Now we're gonna hear a few words from some of the funders of our chairs of research, both old and new. Without them, this program at the Brain Aneurysm Foundation would not be possible. What's up everyone? It's Cody Core, running suit for the New York Football Giants and spokesperson for the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. In 2014, I lost my mom to a ruptured brain aneurysm. It's crazy how something you know so little about uh, can change your life for a lifetime. I'm honored to be able to partner with the Brain Aneurysm Foundation and to be able to use my platform to help 
educate and raise awareness around brain aneurysms. Um, funding a chair of research to me uh, is a crucial component in enhancing our knowledge and understanding around brain aneurysms. Um, your contribution can help save lives um, and make a difference in our fight against brain aneurysms. Um, so with, with that being said, join me in funding a chair of research and together we can stop the pop. Good day. My name is Kathy Schaefer and I'm representing the Schaefer family in working with the Brain Aneurysm Foundation on supporting their research initiatives and grants. For the past seven years, we've worked with the BAF in raising funds so we could have a chair of research called the Kristen Legacy of Love in memory of my daughter Kristen, who at the age of 25 passed away from a brain aneurysm uh, just three weeks after having her first child. In any case, these seven grants that have been given have really done remarkable work, and we applaud all those researchers with their extensive knowledge and their willingness with their super smart brains to really dedicate their lives to finding a cure, finding treatments, finding intervention for this malady. One in 50 people have brain aneurysms, and we don't pay attention to that till we are affected by it. But with the help of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation, and really with all of the assistance of all the researchers, we thank you so much for helping us. This means everything to us. It keeps our daughter's memory alive, but more importantly, it helps people. And if we've helped at least one person during the course of these last seven years, then we've been successful. Don't hesitate to ever think that research uh, is really for the uh, individuals that really want to just spend time in a lab. It's more important how it affects the patients and how it can help prevent and provide treatment for those that suffer. Thank you, have a great day, and congratulations to all you recipients. Hi, my name is Tom Susco, and this is my mom, Nancy. And for the past 12 years, we have funded a research chair in memory of my brother, Tim, who passed away in 2007 from a ruptured brain aneurysm. At the time of his death, Tim was 25 years old, living in Los Angeles, California, and working in the TV and movie industry. To the best of our knowledge, Tim did not have any of the typical symptoms of brain aneurysms, so it left us with a lot of unanswered questions. So our family reached out to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for support and guidance. And one of the things we learned is how much research was desperately needed addressing all areas of brain aneurysms. So when we decided to give back to the BAF, we thought it was appropriate to start a research chair in Tim's name. And over the past 12 years, we've been fortunate to meet some of the researchers who have been conducting this much needed research and attending some of the research symposiums. But most importantly, it's been able to allow us to put a personal touch on the research and to keep Tim's memory alive. We want to thank the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for all they did for us and all they do in the community to support research on a very important topic. Thank, thank you. Hello, my name is Omar Guzman and I'm one of the founders of the Danielle LeBron Guzman Golf Outing, which was started seven years ago when Danielle passed on September 6th of 2013. Had we had known about the early warning signs, perhaps Danielle would be with us today. Along with our other founder, Steve Amelie, and the members of the West Orange Fire Department, we have tried to help keep her legacy alive. After her death, we did not want other families to experience a tragic loss, like the ones that my family had experienced. And we had heard of all the great work that the Brain Aneurysm, Brain Aneurysm Foundation was doing. We wanted to get involved. And working towards raising money with the BAF, towards creating awareness and getting information to the public, there have been grants that have been funded. Research grants work. And since our involvement with the BAF, we have heard back from so many people that were involved with our fundraising, who knew of someone or a loved one who had been impacted by an aneurysm. The impact of saving just one life has an effect on all the lives that we touch. We are happy of being able to help the BAF and other families, and we urge all of those that can help to please do so. We have seen these grants evolve and truly have been a blessing to so many families. Perhaps you may help save a life of someone that you know. Thank you for your help. 
Hello, my name is Paul Camerata, and I'm a member of the Medical Advisory Board of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. And I wanted to talk to you just briefly about the importance of research in the treatment of brain aneurysms. Brain aneurysms result in uh, a number of deaths all over the world, perhaps 500,000 deaths worldwide from brain aneurysms, and most of those people are under age 50. Almost all of us have someone that we know, some friend, some family member, who has suffered as a result of a ruptured brain aneurysm. The strides that we have made in the 30 years or so that I've been treating brain aneurysms are really remarkable. Brain aneurysm treatment now is nearly completely different from when I began treating this, and that's all due to research into the treatment of brain aneurysms, the diagnosis of brain aneurysms and how they form. Research is needed to study the formation of brain aneurysms, uh, to study how to treat them more effectively, to keep them from rupturing, and then how to diagnose them before they rupture so that no one ever has to suffer from a ruptured brain aneurysm again. Earlier this year, I helped a bit with a fundraiser called Buzz for Bath, where at the beginning of COVID times, I shaved my head. Together with a number of other neurosurgeons in the country, and we raised some money for research. We need to continue that, and we need to continue funding research. Very little money, very little money in the United States federal government goes for brain aneurysm research every year. I think if we find out how aneurysms are caused and can diagnose them earlier, no one will ever have to suffer again from a ruptured brain aneurysm. The fact that you're watching this now may mean that someone very near and dear to you has suffered from a ruptured brain aneurysm and perhaps died. I've had a number of patients over the years uh, in that situation and in their memory, uh, I want to give to brain aneurysm research so that no one ever will needlessly have to suffer from a ruptured brain aneurysm. Thank you and thanks for your support. Thank you again to all of you for all you do for the BAF, not just in, in funding research, but also raising awareness. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure now to introduce Dr. Christopher Ogilvy, one of the founders of the foundation, head of our medical advisory board, and he is here to just say a few words of the importance of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation's research program. Hello, my name is Christopher Ogilvy, and I'm medical director of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. I want to thank all the applicants and recipients of the 2020 Brain Aneurysm Foundation grants. As many of you know, the Brain Aneurysm Foundation is the largest funder of dollars for brain aneurysm research, and that includes the national government. This year, we'll be giving out $375,000 worth of funding, which is similar or at least as high as previous years, despite the difficulties of COVID-19 in terms of giving. The grants were high quality, and it was a difficult selection process. The grants are reviewed on an anonymous basis where identifying features are removed from the grants. And they're removed by a panel of experts, not just an individual. I'm one of the people who reviews those grants and was fortunate enough uh, to be, have access to the grants to review some of the high quality research that is indeed funded. I'd like to congratulate the 2020 recipients and we look forward to seeing them in person in the future and thank them for their contributions. Thank you, Dr. Ogilvy. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Bernard Bendock of the Mayo Clinic in Phoenix, Arizona, who was to be our host earlier this month. Dr. Bendock is a leader in the field of neuroscience, a member of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation's Medical Advisory Board, and we're just really thrilled to have him here with us tonight to announce the recipients of the 2020 Brain Aneurysm Foundation Research Grants. Hello, my name is Bernard Bendock. I'm the chair of the Department of Neurosurgery at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. This year we were selected to host the Brain Aneurysm Foundation's Research Grant Awards. Though we cannot be together in person to celebrate the amazing achievements of the awarded individuals, in total the BAF is awarding $375,000 in grants to advance the science of brain aneurysm care. The proposals reviewed were of the highest scientific caliber and will undoubtedly advance our understanding of the biology, natural history, and treatment approaches for brain aneurysms. Simply stated, the science the BAF will be supporting will save and improve lives.
Congratulations to the following recipients. Dr. Jinglo A. from Barrow Neurological Institute was awarded $50,000 for his project, Mechanisms of Impaired Erythrocytosis in Mediating Aneurysm Rupture. Funding is provided by Shirley Dudek Demmer, Chair of Research, and the Taylor Rickelson Chair of Research. Hello, so this is Dr. Jinglo A. from Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix. My project is to study a new mechanism called aphrocytosis, which is related to how the dead cells at the aneurysm site get cleaned up. So it is known that there are accumulated dead cells at the aneurysm site, which is the sign of impairment of this aphrocytosis process. So this may contribute to the rupture of aneurysm. So the goal, my uh, project is to find a way to improve this dead cell cleaning process to prevent aneurysm rupture. So the support from Brain Aneurysm Foundation is critical for the success of my research project because the project is still in its immature stage. So the support from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation will give the project a chance to be developed into a full viable project with the hope to find a potential cure. I want to sincerely thank the Daimler family and the Richardson family for their generous support. I know behind each of these research chairs there is a sad story related to brain aneurysm and my heart is with you. I hope together we can eventually conquer this devastating disease. Thank you very much. Dr. Koji Hosaka from the University of Florida Gainesville was awarded $45,000 for his project Neutrophil Extracellular Trap Formation, a novel mechanism for intracranial aneurysm formation and rupture. Funding is provided by Timothy P. Susco, Chair of Research, the Christopher C. Getsch Chair of Research sponsored by the CV Section, the Amy Lakeisha Harris Core Chair of Research, and the Kristen's Legacy of Love Chair of Research. My name is Koji Kosaka, working in the Department of Neurosurgery at the University of Florida. Our lab research focuses are to find out how aneurysm forms and rupture. Also, we are trying to find out how to heal the aneurysm to prevent aneurysm rupture. Brain Aneurysm Foundation research grants have been very, very helpful because we can continue working on our projects. Also, we have been able to apply uh, to the NIH research grant as well. I would like to thank all the founders to support our research project this year and also I would like to thank to the uh, Brain Aneurysm Foundation for the helpful support. Thank you very much. Hopefully we can see in person each other in the near future. Thank you. Dr. William Dodd from the University of Florida Gainesville was awarded $35,000 for his project NLRP3 Mediated Pyropoptosis as a novel mechanism of cerebral aneurysm rupture. Funding is provided by the Brain Aneurysm Foundation Chair of Research. Hi, my name is Will Dodd and I'm a part of Dr. Brian Ho's research team here at the University of Florida McKnight Brain Institute. For the past year, we've been researching how inflammation contributes to brain aneurysm rupture. Through this research, we've identified a novel compound called MCC950 that can reduce the rupture of brain aneurysms. The Brain Aneurysm Foundation and its generous donors have given us the opportunity to continue this research for another year. We hope to continue working on the relationship between inflammation and brain aneurysms to eventually find new treatments that can stop brain aneurysms from rupturing. The research that we do here would simply not be possible without uh, the Brain Aneurysm Foundation and all of its donors. So we would really like to thank each and every uh, Brain Aneurysm Foundation donor. Our research specifically for the past year was funded in part by the Terry A. Kirsting and Luta Sanui Chairs of Research. So we would like to extend a special appreciation uh, to them as well. Thank you. Dr. John Thompson from the University of Miami was awarded $45,000 for his project evaluating the use of remote ischemic preconditioning in patients undergoing endovascular repair of brain aneurysms. Funding is provided by Thomas J. Tinlin, Chair of Research. Hello, this is John Thompson from the University of Miami. 
During the endovascular repair of brain aneurysms, it's relatively common for blood clots to form, which can actually block blood flow to the brain. When this does occur, it causes small localized death of brain tissue called an infarct. Now, some of these infarcts are immediately clinically evident as sensory language or motor deficit, while other infarcts are actually clinically silent in the short term, but can induce long-term neurological deficits, such as dementia, as well as Alzheimer's disease. Therefore, the aim of this study is to determine if we can actually reduce these procedurally induced infarcts by activating the body's own endogenous neuroprotective pathways using a technique called remote ischemic preconditioning. Remote ischemic preconditioning is activated by inflating and deflating a standard blood pressure cuff on the arm or leg, thereby inducing brief non-damaging interruptions in blood flow, which thereby prepares the tissues as well as the cells for a damaging interruption in blood flow, which occurs in the infarcted tissue. The ultimate goal of this research is really to pr provide clinicians with a novel tool to reduce these procedurally induced infarcts and thereby allow better patient outcomes following the repair of brain aneurysms. The funding from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation is incredibly important. Without it, we wouldn't be able to do this research. So I wanna say thank you to the fantastic team at the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for all the hard work that they do every single year. And I also wanna say a special thank you to Tom Tinlin and all the volunteers which worked with him this previous year for funding this research. It truly is appreciated. Thank you very much. Dr. Ethan A. Winkler from the University of California, San Francisco was awarded $40,000 for his project, Cell-Specific Gene Expression Signatures in Human Brain Aneurysms. Funding is provided by Cynthia Lynn Sherwin, Chair of Research, and the Buzz for BAF Chair of Research. Hello, my name is Ethan Winkler, and I'm one of the Chief Residents of Neurological Surgery at the University of California, San Francisco. The title of my research project is Cell-Specific Gene Expression Changes in Human Brain Aneurysms. In this project, we'll be taking human brain aneurysms from the operating room, breaking them apart into individual cells, and then sequencing each individual cell with a novel sequencing technology known as single cell sequencing. What this will allow us to do is characterize gene expression changes at a single cell level, and for the first time, deconstruct human brain aneurysms into individual cells to learn exactly what types of cells are present. We'll then be able to make comparisons between unruptured and ruptured brain aneurysms. And it's our hope that this will help identify new targets for therapy overlooked by prior technologies. I'd like to thank the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for their gracious support. Exploratory studies such as these are always difficult to find funding sources. And larger studies would not be possible without the support of foundations like the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. I'd like to especially thank the Cynthia Lynn Sherwin, Chair of Research, as well as the Buzz for Bath Research and Team Cindy for their gracious support for these research studies. Thank you very much. Dr. Joanna Shavesma from Toronto Western Hospital was awarded 30,000 for her project, Prospective Randomized Open Label Trial to Evaluate Risk Factor Management in Patients with Unruptured Intracranial Aneurysms. Protect you. Funding is provided by Fight Like Frank, Chair of Research, the Stroke Family Chair of Research, and the Danielle Guzman Chair of Research. Hi, I am Joanna Skashma and I work at the University Health Network in Toronto in Canada. Our research in, is on brain aneurysms that are not ruptured. These are often small and do not require an intervention through surgery or endovascular treatment via the blood vessels. Typically, we follow these patients with uh, imaging to search for growth over time. There's currently no medication that can suppress the risk of growth and or rupture. We now investigate in a large international trial whether aspirin in the combination with stringent blood pressure control can help suppressing the risk of growth and or rupture. This would be a very simple but groundbreaking new treatment for patients with brain aneurysms. Without the support from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation, we cannot make this happen in North America. We therefore want to deeply thank our funders to support this pivotal trial that may change the life of many. Thank you. Dr. James Purcell from St. Joseph's Hospital and Medical Center, Arizona, was awarded 30,000 for his project targeting senescent cells for the prevention of intracranial aneurysm rupture. Funding is provided by Cammie Clark, Chair of Research. Good afternoon, my name is James Purcell from the Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix, Arizona. 
Uh, clinical studies have shown a link between aging and the rupture of brain aneurysm, and our research is looking into why this is the case. Senescent cells, we think, might offer an explanation for this phenomenon. Senescent cells are cells which have permanently exited the cell cycle. They tend to accumulate in aging tissues, where they've been shown to contribute to a number of diseases, including cardiovascular diseases. And this occurs largely through promoting inflammation and matrix degradation. So it's possible that these are also involved in brain aneurysm rupture. Hopefully our research will clarify whether or not this is the case, and if so, senescent cells might become an interesting target for the prevention of aneurysm rupture. The funding that we're getting from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation is going to be essential for purchasing the drugs and transgenic mice that we need to conduct our experiments. So thank you so much to Tristan Clark for supporting us. Dr. Dominic A. Siller from Oregon Health Science University was awarded $30,000 for his project, Pet Imaging of Soluble Epoxide Hydrolase in SAH. Funding is provided by Brain Aneurysm Foundation Chair of Research. Hello, my name is Dominic Siler. I'm a neurosurgery resident at Oregon Health and Science University, and I'm extremely excited to be the recipient of a 2020 Brain Aneurysm Foundation grant. The ultimate goal of our work here at OHSU is to design new therapies that not only increase the number of subarachnoid hemorrhage survivors, but increase the number of survivors that walk out of the hospital with less disability. The study that you funded takes the last 10 years of our work identifying a new enzyme that when blocked can prevent strokes in subarachnoid hemorrhage and advances it along the clinical trials track. We will be using a new non-invasive test that can not only quantify the activity of this enzyme, but can also verify that any new treatments we develop actually targets the enzyme as we intended. This is absolutely critical to the development of new treatments along this pathway and will accelerate this substantially. Without a doubt, Brain Aneurysm Foundation funding is more critical than ever and absolutely essential to the advancement of programs like ours. In fact, the initial discoveries, which have now culminated in the completion of our first phase one clinical trial and put us on the doorstep for developing the first drug to treat subarachnoid hemorrhage in 40 years was initially funded by a Brain Aneurysm Foundation grant. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Please keep doing what you're doing, and I look forward to sharing our new discoveries with you soon. Thanks and goodbye. Dr. Devin McBride from the University of Texas Health Science Center, Houston, was awarded $30,000 for his project, Are Neutrophil Exocellular Traps a Biomarker of Delayed Deficits After SAH? Funding is provided by Brain Aneurysm Foundation Chair of Research. Hello, my name is Devin McBride from the UT Health Science Center in Houston, Texas. Our current project aims to identify a marker which can be used to predict which patients are at risk for developing delayed functional deficits after subarachnoid hemorrhage. Delayed deficits occurs in 30% of patients after aneurysm rupture and is a major contributor to poor outcome and mortality. To date, no one knows who is at risk for developing delayed deficits. Additionally, our research has the potential to identify new therapeutic targets. As a new professor, receiving funding from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation is crucial to my success. Such funding is also important in advancing our understanding of subarachnoid hemorrhage and aneurysm rupture. I would like to thank each of the sponsors for their selflessness in contributing to our research. Dr. Vince Totino from the University of Buffalo was awarded $40,000 for his project, a whole blood RNA diagnostic for unruptured brain aneurysm, risk assessment, prototype development, and testing. Funding is provided by Carol W. Harvey Chair of Research and the Sharon Epperson Chair of Research. Hello, my name is Dr. Vincent Tatino from the University of Buffalo's Cannon Stroke and Vascular Research Center. My research focuses on the development of a blood test for brain aneurysms. To do this, we have found a unique markers of brain aneurysm in the gene expression profiles of circulating immune cells, which we can use to predict if a new patient has a brain aneurysm. We have since begun to create a blood test based on this technology towards commercialization of a product. Our current studies are aimed at determining if these markers can also be used to predict rupture risk of an aneurysm. Throughout this process, 
Brain aneurysm foundation funding has been our lifeblood, enabling us to acquire critical preliminary results and pursue federal funding. I also want to sincerely thank all of the donors. You truly are helping to make a big difference in the fight against brain aneurysms. Thank you. Again, congratulations to each and every one of you for advancing basic science, translational and clinical brain aneurysm research. You should be very proud. I would like to thank Ms. Christine Buckley, her team, and the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for allowing me to present these awards on their behalf and for the amazing work they do daily to raise awareness about the deadly consequences of brain aneurysms. A very special thank you is also due to all the generous donors who made these critical grants possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bendock, and congratulations to all our 2020 BAF Research Grant recipients. We expect great things of you, and I look forward to seeing you in person in 2021. Now I would like to thank our sponsors for this program. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thomas Jefferson Neurosurgery, the Mayo Clinic, Stryker, and Microvention. Welcome everyone. My name is Kathy Demjanovic and I am a communications leader with Microvention, a company that produces neurovascular products to treat diseases of the brain. Our company strives to provide the best in class products to treat several cerebrovascular diseases, including aneurysms. One of those recently introduced products called the Web or Woven Endo Bridge is an intrasacular device that treats an aneurysm in a minimally invasive procedure. We pride ourselves with continuously providing products and services that benefit our clinicians and patients through constant innovation, research, and development. We support the efforts of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation to communicate and educate families and clinicians and are proud to be a part of their mission. By partnering together and leveraging our unique strengths and resources, we can achieve more at a faster pace toward finding solutions and raising awareness. Thanks to the BAF, patients and families have a place to go to be educated and comforted at a time when they need it most. We thank them for their support and we will continue with our mission to develop products that change people's lives. A very heartfelt thank to our funders of the Chairs of Research. We have seven recurring chairs and three new chairs. Your partnership with the foundation to keep funding critical research is what we all need to save and improve lives going forward. Without you, this evening would not be possible. So thank you so very much. In closing, I would like to introduce a brain aneurysm survivor, advocate, funder of Chair of Research, and current Chairman of the Board, Thomas Tinlin. Hey everybody, Tom Tinlin, Chairman of the Board of Directors for the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Obviously, we're not in Phoenix, Arizona, but I'm talking to you from my home in South Boston, Massachusetts. But we know it's not where we are physically, but it's the work that you all continue to do finding out uh, new cures, new treatments, and interventions for brain aneurysms. So we want to thank, obviously, the Mayo Clinic for being our host this year. We want to thank everybody who contributed to this year's event. Congratulations to all of our grant recipients. And remember, we're all counting on you. And thank you very much to all of our returning and our new donors. Without your help, this would not be possible. So hopefully we'll be together next year and in person. And until then, keep up the great work. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I'm sorry that we couldn't be together, but I look forward to seeing all of you in 2021 
Please stay safe and well, and thank you so much for your continued support of the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Have a great night.